when, when the disciples you know, were with Jesus and just before he had to go to the cross, Jesus girded himself like a slave, like a servant, wrapped himself in a towel and he washed the disciples' feet. And uh, they said, what are you doing, Lord? What are you doing? You're washing our feet. And he said, yes, uh, I'm cleansing your feet. You know, as a, as a, as a, uh, um, your master, I, I am your servant. And he was showing this beautiful picture of serving his people. And uh, uh, Peter, in his zeal, not understanding, said, oh, then you need to wash all of me. You know, <laughs> and Jesus answered, no. Just need to wash your feet. You're cleansed by the word that I've given you. But we come with the blood of Jesus that cleanses our conscience from dead works. It's so much deeper than just cleansing ourselves outwardly. You know, we live in a hot country. It's good to have a bath every day or a shower or something or other, get rid of the sweat and the stink. But Jesus cleanses us from the inside out. He cleanses our conscience. He cleanses our conscience to serve the living God. He cleanses our, our, our mind. He cleanses us. He cleanses our conscience from dead works, it says. Not just works, but the way we think gets cleansed by the power of his blood. And as we partake of him, as we partake of this little biscuit that speaks of his body, this little cup that speaks of his blood, we're partaking of him. By faith partake of him. Allow the cleansing blood of Jesus to flow over you. Allow it to flow through your mindset, through your thinking, through your heart. Partake of his body, his healing power and his grace. It's just a simple act of faith. Just as Alec was saying, you know, just a, a simple text and we just believe God to touch him. Just simple faith and God can flow and touch us. An outstanding testimony from Abraham. God just touches us and helps us in the midst of everything. Jesus, we thank you so much. We honor you. We bless you for it in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. Let's eat and drink. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Thank you, Stuart. You can gather that. I'll give you a minute. <clears throat> we had an outstanding prayer meeting on Tuesday night. Just the presence of God came so beautifully speaking to us. I'm just so encouraged that God is speaking to us. He's speaking to us afresh. Speaking to us with life. He's speaking, it was just so, so lovely. God was just showing us some things and what he wants to do and, and, and uh, how he wants to do it. Is, is, is still working out, but he's, he's doing it. It's not by might or by power, it's by his spirit. And the spirit of life comes and energizes and empowers us. He's a spirit. He, he's, it's not just by us trying to figure out how to do it better. It's by his spirit. He's a good God. He comes in power and life. And so I encourage you, if you can't get to the pre-meeting, be people who pray. Press into the presence of God. Allow God to come around about you. Wherever you are, whether it's sitting at home, whether you're going for a drive, going for a walk, personally, I like to walk when I pray because it keeps me awake. If I sit down, I'll just sort of, you know, relax. But I've got to stand up on the inside and press in. So I don't have to walk fast, but you notice I just tend to do that, whatever I'm doing, but I'll just walk when I pray. And Deb will tell you, she sits down and I'll walk the living room. I'll just go up and down and, and sense the presence of God and walk in that. And if you're having an all-night prayer meeting, that's the way to do it. You keep yourself awake. You sit down, you go to sleep. But if you want to keep pressing in, you've just got to keep yourself active and press into the presence of God. Allow the presence of God to come around about you. Who knows this is a two-way street? It's a two-way relationship. Isn't that right? But God wants to speak to us. You know, you can't grow grass on a busy street. <laughs> Isn't that right, Keith? <laughs> God is so good. We're going to take our tithes and offerings for I forget, like I did last week, and just honour God with our finances. Father, we bring our tithe, the tenth of our increase. 
We bring our offering. That's which we want to give and honor you with it. We bless you with it in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Stuart. So, a tithe is a tenth. So we bring a tenth of our increase and honor God with it because he just touches us so powerfully. I personally give online. As soon as my money comes in, I'll give them my tenth. That's my priority. That's the first thing that I pay is my tithe. And, and uh, just believe God for the provision and for the rest that flows. It's so lovely. Wonderful. Wonderful. Jack, come up here. We've got back his mouth, so this will work. Jack, tell us what's happening. Yeah, tell us about, you know, we've got something we're launching this afternoon, I believe. Yeah, so this Sunday and all the Sundays coming, we're going to be going and starting a young adults and youth Sunday afternoon gathering. So from 5 p.m. on the summertime, we're going to be gathering all the young adults. We're going to have some food. We're going to have some fellowship, play some board games, maybe watch a movie. It's just going to be really, really kind of laid back. So if you guys have any grandchildren or any friends or people that you might know that are younger, you know, any age from 12 all the way to 40, you know, not 30. <laughs> I don't know. You don't have a specific age gap yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Simon, you don't worry. <laughs> you look 20, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're youth. You look 20. You're fine. <laughs> you're sneaking under the radar. <laughs> so, yeah, anyone that um, knows people, they can feel free to invite them along. It's going to be really casual. It's just going to be a time of really beautiful fellowship. And then afterwards, around about an hour later, we're going to start like worshipping God and start pressing in. And uh, then for when we progress, we might share a word and it'll slowly turn and do its own thing, but we just want to see what God wants to do with it, and we just feel burning on our hearts that we need to start it. We just need to do something, have some food, get some people there, have some time of fellowship, spend some time with Jesus, and just love on people, and yeah, just watch it grow from there. So yeah, it's going to be an amazing time for young and young adults and youth just to grow and be in tune with one another. Hey, thanks, Jack. That's awesome. That's starting tonight. So we've got a, a young adult, youth young adult service starting tonight, which I'm fantastic about it. That'll be at the hub. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for speaking to us, Holy Ghost. We thank you that you're the God who speaks, that you're a living God, that it's not just something that, that uh, our belief system, that God, it's interaction with you, it's encounter with you day by day. We honor you, we love you in Jesus' marvelous name. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every word that comes from God is, is what we live by. You know, in, in uh, the Old Testament, when the Jews were wandering through the wilderness, they had to pick up their food every day. And they were not allowed to pick it up, except on Saturday they, or Friday, they could pick it up twice as much and it would last two days. But every other day they had to pick up their food off the ground. It was called manna which literally means, what is it? And it was this little, it was like wafers, it tasted of honey. And that was what they ate for, for 40 years. Uh, some people have just gone on a Daniel fast where they only ate vegetables. You imagine eating wafers only for 40 years. I don't know how you'd go with that. I think I'd be wanting a steak or a bit of protein or something or other. I'm a man, I like my, like my protein. But... Living on wafers, it'll probably slim me down a bit. I don't know. How could I only get any more good looking? It'd be difficult. I don't know. So anyway, I'm joking. So <laughs> but they had to eat it every day and they were not allowed to eat it two days running. And then God was really severe about this. He said, if you do that two days running, if you pick up more than you need, the next day it would go off and if they did that, they broke the law, and the penalty for the break in the law was pretty steep. It was stoning. That's pretty steep for just getting hungry. But the Bible says, man shall not live by uh, bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We've got to be people who hear the fresh word of God. God wants to speak afresh. And God speaks in many, many ways. We've got this verse in Hebrews 1, 3, says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person upholds all things by the word of his power. 
And when he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. That's Jesus. It's speaking about Jesus who upholds all things by the word of his power. The power in God's word upholds all things. We are here because God spoke and he created. And there is power in that word. It upholds all things. We have a universe that is so magnificent. And the power of the God's word upholds it all. There is creative power in the word of God. God spoke and the worlds were framed and the universe was made. And we are here because God speaks. When Jesus was baptised in John 12, 29, God spoke and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. But the people that stood by and heard it said, it thundered. And others said, an angel spoke. And that's one of the things when God speaks, we each hear from our own perspective. Some people said it sounded like thunder. Some people said it was an angel. And so when God speaks, we each hear by our spirit. And we hear from our own filter, our own perspective, we hear what God is saying. That's why the Bible says, when the prophets prophesy, let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge, 1 Corinthians 14, 29. Because we each hear from our own uh, uh, mindset. And God will be speaking the same thing, but this person will hear it this way and another person will hear it that way. That's why the Bible says, you know, out of the mouths of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So when God speaks, God will be speaking the same thing. The one person will have uh, uh, something from this direction, another person will have something from here, but they'll both mean the same thing. So when God speaks, he speaks uniformly. This Bible is, comes from the revelation of the Holy Spirit. And when God speaks, he never disagrees with it. He'll never disagree with his word. But what happens when God speaks, it'll clarify what's in it. And I've had times when God has spoken and it shifted my understanding of what's in the word. The word hasn't changed, but my understanding has. Are you hearing this? So when God speaks and the fresh word of God comes, it doesn't necessarily change you know, what it says, but my understanding can increase. My understanding can mature, line upon line, precept upon precept. My understanding of what God is saying can grow because it reveals who he is. It reveals something about his character and his nature. When I have an encounter with God, we can have all sorts of encounters. They come in all shapes and sizes and sorts of forms. And, and, and some people have incredible physical experiences with God. We can wake up laughing every morning because the presence of God is on us. We can wake up, you know, uh, in the, in the, when we get into that place of worship in His holiness and the sense of His majesty and, and we just want to be silent before Him. Even though it's worship that got us there, we get into the sense of His holiness and you don't want to, it's like you don't want to break the silence. You know what I'm talking about? The holy presence of God, holy, holy, holy. The magnificent place. The, 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 that place where I, I've had times when I've been praying and I had my agenda and I'm going to pray for all this and, and I'm going to pray for stuff and then God shows up in his holiness and all my agenda goes out the window and I can't think what was I going to pray because I, I, you know, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing before God. You just get this incredible sense that, that God is the boss here. He's the one in charge. He's the one calling the shot. We just come into a holy place, the holiness of God, and allow his spirit to speak. God speaks in many ways. The uh, Bible says um, in Acts 2.17, It shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. So that's hope for all of us. Your young men shall see vision. A vision can be, there are many, many layers of visions that people have. Some visions are just like 
our imagination and God will put a thought in our mind and a, and a vision will just see something in our imagination that God will be speaking. Other times, it's like you've got extra senses involved. When I was leading my, my kids in how to pray and how to encounter God, my little daughter, I think she was only about nine at the time, I said, now God is going to show you something. And we prayed and we're just, God, to speak to us. She started crying. And uh, uh, she wouldn't tell me what was happening. She was so impacted by it. Years, years later, many, just a few years ago, actually, she's in her mid-30s, so she can still come to our afternoon meeting. But uh, <laughs> I asked her, do you remember that time? She said, Dad, I was there at the gates of heaven. I could touch the pearl on the gates. They talk about pearly gates. The Bible says that they're made of pearl. She, was, she had a full three-dimensional, five-sense vision where she was there. The Apostle Paul says there was a man who was in this body. I don't know if he was in the body or out of the body because it can overtake you when you have these encounters. It can overtake all your senses. Sometimes we just, you know, it's just a thought. Other times you can hear things. Other times it's we're fully immersed. So God speaks in different ways and depending upon where we're at, depending upon, you know, lots of things, it's our perspective that we filter these things through. Some people said it thundered. Others said it was an angel. Some people might have had all sorts of different experiences. I've had times when the power of God was so powerfully upon me, I just was so drunk. Couldn't I remember once when the power of God hit me so hard, I was on the floor for I don't, I don't know how long it was, just half an hour or something rather. The meeting had gone, the preacher was preaching, and I got up to walk back to my seat. And I don't know how you do this, but I was seeing triple. You know, I've only got two eyes. I, I can see double when you, you know, you go like this, but I was seeing three. And I, I didn't know how that happened, but I was just, God was doing a number on me. And it was the presence of God. We've got to understand that the presence of God carries us. But we don't live by bread alone, but by every word. We need the fresh word, the fresh presence, the fresh encounter, the freshness of God every day. We've got to come into the freshness of his spirit, the freshness of him lifting us up, lifting us, encouraging us, helping us, speaking to us every day. Every day we need the fresh stuff. I'm looking for God, the fresh word from God every day. Not that it will give me fresh direction, but I've found that as I press into the presence of God, he begins to reveal things anew in the same direction, in the same purpose, in the same vein. He'll show me things. And God, what happens to me often when God is speaking is that the, the, the verses will just start bouncing through me. I'll get verses from the Bible, this one, then that one, then this one, and they'll be along a, a theme, a vein. He'll be speaking to my inner life. God speaks to us, and he speaks through his word. That's one of the ways that God speaks to me. Now, I'll just start thinking through all these different, and he'll just open the truths of the word of God to me. And it'll feed my inner life, feed my spirit. We like that feed, our natural man, don't we? Anybody hate feeding your natural man? You know, there's not too many of us here. We all like feeding. We've got to feed our spirit. We've got to feed our inner life and allow God to speak a fresh, fresh manner, fresh food. Here's a verse for you. Romans 10, 17. We should all know this one. Say it with me. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Sometimes we think that verse means faith comes by hearing the word of God, but that's not what it says. If I got my audio Bible out and I listened to my audio Bible, then I should have the faith of God. But it doesn't say faith comes by hearing the word of God. It says faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. We hear by the word of God. His presence is his voice. 
his presence carries what he is saying. Are you hearing this? Hearing comes by the word of God. If we didn't have the word of God, we wouldn't hear. He upholds all things by the word of his power. You've been in a, uh, a, a, an evangelist meeting where uh, a man speaks the gospel and people respond and give their lives to Jesus and get saved. But how many of them said, would have said, God spoke to me? But yet the presence of God comes. They get convicted by the Spirit. And out of that conviction they respond. That's the voice of God. You see this? Oftentimes we try and put what God is doing into our box. I heard about, heard about uh, this Christian family and they were driving down the road and a little boy sitting in the back seat and he spoke up and said, Dad, slow down, there's a big rock on the road round the corner. And so he slowed down and sure enough, they drove round the corner and here was this big rock on the road. And Dad was so impressed. And he said to his little boy, what else is God saying? And he said, pull up at McDonald's in the next town. <laughs> but isn't that like us? We get this magnificent thing from God and then we try and put it into our own little box to make it like us. To make it what we want. See, see God is a spirit. And he, it's spirit to spirit that he speaks. The Bible calls it like this. Deep calls to deep. His spirit to our spirit. The presence of God comes. And sometimes, you know, sometimes I, I can't, my mind has got to catch up with it. Sometimes it's a mystery. But yet I'm in the presence of God. I'm, my mind is going, what are you saying? What are you saying? But I'm in this presence. And his presence is his voice. In his presence, is what he wants to do, is what he wants to say, is what he wants to speak. Sometimes it comes really very, very clear. When God wants to speak, he can make it very, very clear. Sometimes, you know, because we've got to understand that God is a living God. It's a relationship that we have here, not a formula. It's not a formula. And so often we can try and make it a formula and it doesn't work that way. It works by relationship. It works, works out of this place of intimacy, connecting with God. And out of that place of intimacy, then everything else flows. My wife and I have developed some just communication. She's not here, so I can tell some secrets. <laughs> I hope I don't get in trouble. So, you know, sometimes when we're just lying in bed half asleep, we just have these little communications with one another. And, and you know, she'll go, uh -huh. and, and I'll go, uh -huh. which means, are you okay? And I'm going, I don't know. But all we've done is just these little intimate things. That's enough, I'm not telling you anymore. So, <laughs> but it's out of just knowing one another. That's what it's like with God. We've got to know Him. That's why it's so important that we read the Word of God and get the Word of God into our thinking so that we can know Him. And so that when God speaks, we just know what He's speaking. We know what He wants. We know His heart. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. You know, there are some beautiful examples of this in the Word of God, how we've got to embrace what God is saying and allow it to lead and to guide and to speak and allow the freshness of what God is saying uh, help us. A, a beautiful example is Mary. And I'll, I'll read this story for you in Luke chapter 1, 26 to 38. In six months, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth 
to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favoured one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women. For when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And I think it's interesting that the angel would say she's found favour. When you look at her actual circumstances, there's not much naturally favourable going on. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest and Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren, for with God nothing will be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be according to your word. And the angel left. God spoke through the angel. He didn't speak to her direct, he used an angel. God can use many, many vehicles. Uh, uh, sometimes, uh, anybody here received a prophetic word? Somebody's given you a prophetic word? Yep, well, they're an angel to you. They're speaking as a messenger of God and bring forth the word of God to you. That's why it's so important that we weigh it up because sometimes these messengers have got their own filters and their own things that they put upon it. So we've got to weigh it up. Weigh it up before God. There's a witness with me. Is this what God is already saying to me? And I love this. From Mary, she says, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. She identified herself as a maidservant and agreed with the word, Let it be according to your word. Knowing that it would put her in a difficult situation with her husband, with a fiancé. Here I am, pregnant, and I've got a baby. got nowhere to live, no support. Here she was, didn't have anywhere to have the baby. At that time, Herod was killing all the young male children under two years old. But yet God called her highly favoured, but she was in an incredibly difficult situation. Sometimes the favour of God can look very difficult than what we think favour is. But when the favour of God comes upon us, one of the things that it will do is it will expose what's in the people around us. And she was highly favoured by God, but not so much amongst men. Her husband could have put her out. Herod was tr looking for pregnant women to kill their children. That's a tough situation. But here she is. Here I am the maidservant of the Lord, let it be according to your word. And when God speaks, we've got to be prepared to embrace it and agree with it and put our faith in it and run with it when, what, when God speaks. It amazes me. Listen to this. King David was a man with a heart after God's own heart, so much so that God said, I am going to call my son your son. And here it is, right here. The angel said, you are son of David. And Jesus was known as a son of David. So much so did David have a heart after God's heart. And we've got to have a heart after God's heart to know what is the heart of God. Jesus said to his disciples, I've called your servants. Now, oftentimes we'll pray. I don't know if you've ever prayed this. God, what do you want me to do? Anybody ever prayed that? What do you want me to do? One person said that. What do you want me to do? But Jesus says, a servant wants to know what the father, what the head of the house, what, what do I do, boss? What do I do? 
But Jesus said, I've called you friends. A friend knows the heart of the friend. Not looking for what to do, but he knows their heart. So when we know the heart of the Father, we don't have to ask, what do I do? Because we already know. Does that make sense? We've got an intimacy. We've got a place of relationship. We've got a place where we know what the heart of the Father is. Where we know what God wants to do. Where we know, he says, feed the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Give water to the homeless. You know, feed them. Help them. Help one another. Have this, have this heart which is for one another, not just for yourself, but to, to encourage one another, to bless one another, to build one another up, to help one another, to walk the journey with that knowing the heart of the Father. We know it already. We don't have to ask God, what do I do? So we've got to come to the place where we don't just know the heart of the Father, but we know the mind of the Father. That's why it's so important that we live off the flesh voice of God every day. What is God saying today? What is your mind? We need to develop what we call spiritual intelligence where we know how to hear from God, how to walk with God and how to bring the answers of God to this world. Our vision is to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. We want the kingdom of heaven on earth. And that's got to come in every sphere, every area, every business place, every home, every relationship, every place we work, to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth, to bring what God has got here down to earth. But sometimes we need the wisdom of God to do that. We need the answers of God. And we've got to know how to pull the answers out of the third heaven and bring it down here onto the first heaven, to bring the answers of God, to bring the wisdom of God, the strategies of heaven down here. We need to be able to hear God for that. And to do that, it takes time in the relationship and to spend time in prayer and to press in and say, this is, this is my way, walk in it. And to bring the answers of God. God knows all things. Hello? And God's a pretty smart, cluey sort of person. He knows how the whole thing is put together. We need the answers of God. We should not be handing over the leadership of, of industry to the world. We should not be handing over the leadership of science and technology to the world. We should not be handing over the arts to the world. We should be the leaders of this as the church of the living God. We should be the ones with the answers of God for the world. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. But we need the light of God in us to bring it. We need to develop some answers from heaven and hear from heaven. We should be the one leading the charge in the arts, leading the charge in education, leading the charge in science and technology, not leaving it all to Elon Musk or somebody else. Yeah, it's gone quiet again. Are you hearing this? We're supposed to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. But to do that, we need to hear the fresh voice of God, to hear God bring the answers of God, to, to bring the, the life of the Spirit into our workplace, to bring the answers of heaven into our home, to bring the glory of God, to, 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 to bring the manifest presence of God and influence our community, influence this, the art, influence the, the business workplace, influence with integrity and with a character and with a life of the Spirit, to influence. We need to have a legacy that will live well beyond us to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. Are you hearing this? It's by hearing the voice of God. We've got to hear the fresh voice of God, not just live on the old. King David brought the future into his world. Now, let me just explain that a little bit. He was a Jew, wasn't he? Lived amongst the Jewish people, and there was a whole bunch of laws that they had in how they were supposed to approach God. Only the priests could go into the holy place only the priests could eat of the showbread. Only the priests with their sacrifice could go into the temple. But King David had such an intimacy with God, he brought the future way of encountering God into his presence. 
and he set up a tabernacle where people, he got singers and musicians who would worship day and night called the Tabernacle of David. You heard of that? He brought that in into this place where they would encounter God and that psalm says, we enter his gates with thanksgiving, we enter his courts with praise and he brought the future into his presence. It wasn't for his time, it was for our time. That is how we enter. That's why we have a song service. We enter into his presence. And King David brought the future into his world. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to bring what is in heaven into our world. To embrace it. To hear God. To bring that present reality. To bring what should be in the future into the here and now. I've got a lot more I could say about that, but that'll do. David was a man after God's own heart. God loved it so much that he allowed it, even though it was against the law. Now he said, now we'll follow that path with the tabernacle of David and enter in with praise and worship. God under- David understood how to approach God. Because of that place where you hear the voice of God and many of our psalms were written in that place in the tabernacle of David, in a place of praise and worship. And out of that place of revelation, hearing God, we have this, we've got a whole book, a book of Psalms, where the praise and worship comes. Because we've heard the fresh word of God. There's few people who walk in the fresh word of God. Can you imagine, can you imagine Abraham? Here's Abraham, and he's heard from God, take your son, your promised son, up onto the mountain and sacrifice him, can you imagine if, if there's Abraham and he's got his son all laid out, he's got the knife in his hand, ready to sacrifice his son, and if he wasn't listening to the fresh word of God. And God said, stop, hold it. If he wasn't listening, he would have sacrificed his son. He's got to be listening. Walk in obedience. Walk in the fresh place. Treat of the fresh manner. Sweet of the, the, what God is saying now. Sweet of what, how he wants to lead and guide us now. The fresh, the fresh presence. To come daily into his presence and allow God to speak daily out of that fresh. And allow the fresh life of God to flow to us and through us. Father, we thank you for your word. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your anointing. I thank you, Holy Ghost, that you are a living God and you speak to us daily. You speak to us afresh. That the manna from heaven is fresh and it's alive and it's full of full of your who you are, God. You impart faith. God, you uphold all things by the word of your power. That your spirit is alive and it's fresh, and your presence is speaking powerfully to us. My God, I thank you, I thank you. That you help us to see what you see. That we won't be derailed and distracted by the things that are happening in our world, because there's so much going on and you're shaking so much. And yet, Lord, that which remains is the kingdom of God. It will not be shaken. That you'd allow us to see your kingdom and what you want to build for eternity. That, you, God, you'd, you'd part the veil for us. That we would see what you are doing. That we would see the hand of God. That we would see the move of your spirit. That we would see and hear the voice of God for our day, for our generation, for the here and now. That you, we would be your friends to know what is in your heart we would have the voice, the, the ears to hear, the ears to hear, that you would give us the ears to hear what is in your mind, Lord God, what is in your mind. God, that you would speak and speak clearly, that you'd reveal it to us, that sometimes it's a mystery, that you'd help our minds to catch up to it, God, to be alive to it. Thank you, Spirit of God, we love you. We honour you, we exalt you. My God, you're so worthy, you're so worthy, you're so worthy. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. There are some people here, you're saying, I'd like to be able to hear, but I've got these, these things that are just pushing against me so hard that they take all my focus, they take all my energy. These things are pushing against me. 
some people it's, 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 there's, a, there's like a um, physical issue that push against you and they take your mind and all you want to do is just get past them. There are others that have, have, have pressures that are coming in, in finances, pressures that are coming in relationships and you just, you, 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 you can't see the future because these pressures are, are just so pushing against you. All you want to do is just make it through. You want to overcome in the things that are in your face. Spirit of God. Spirit of God wants to come by his power and help you through these things. So there are, there are, there are three areas there. Some have physical ailments that just Always draw your mind. Whenever you're praying, it's just like, God, heal me, God, heal me, God, heal me. Others, there's finances, and others, there's pressures, external pressures, relationships, I, I, I think it's mostly about. Who are those ones? Let me pray with you. Let me believe God with you. Come on, let me, come on, let me pray. Uh, God is speaking here. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Your presence, your presence, your presence. Your presence, Holy Ghost. Your presence helping. It's the presence of God that helps us overcome. He comes by His Spirit. Father, we just stand in faith with new people. Put your hands towards these people. There is a freshness of God that's pouring out right now. Several times this week, God has spoken to me about staying firm, staying true. Staying on purpose, staying on track. We're not off track, we're on track. We're going where God has wanted us, but we've got to stand our ground sometimes and believe Him. You know what I'm going to preach. Again? <laughs> I just want to encourage you. God loves us. He's a good God. God bless you. Have a fantastic week. Love one another. And uh, 